Hello everyone, in this video I want to show you how to make a gearbox with uh, two gears that are made using SolidWorks Toolbox and also bearings from SolidWorks Toolbox and then uh, we're gonna make the shafts and the keys as well as the housing for the gearbox inside the assembly. So uh, here in the housing we're gonna make it multi-material or multi-body basically. So we go to ANSI inch and uh, let's go for the bearings, go to ball bearings and uh, we go for this uh, instrument ball bearing, right click and say create a part. And we go, there are different sizes here. You can see the amount of uh, inner diameter, outer diameter, and the thickness are provided as the three numbers for the size. We go for a shaft of half an inch inner diameter, and the outer diameter is 0.75 is good. And the number of balls you can change, right, to any full and uh, you want it simplified or you want it detailed, I would like the uh, detailed one so I can see the balls actually here and I will add a cage to it. Right, there we go, the cages are there and I okay that. <clears throat> and I'm going to uh, call this part the berry. So I go save as and go here and call it berry. Okay, so this is the bearing, then uh, I go here and create gears under power transmission, under gears, I choose a spur gear and uh, go for creating parts. And uh, before I forget anything, make sure the shaft diameter is one half which is basically the same as your um, inner diameter of the bearing and here in this video by the way we are not going to go over tolerances okay so in reality you have to observe a lot of tolerances pressure angle we go with 20 degrees and the thickness of the uh, gear 0.4 is good. The number of uh, teeth is 24 diametral pitch, which is the number of teeth over the diameter of the pitch circle is uh, 12. That means the diameter is gonna be two inches, okay? And if you want, you can have uh, more teeth here. So you can go with like 24 to make it like one. So to me that 12 is good with 24 teeth. So it's two inches in diameter. And uh, then uh, we go for keyway and there are different versions. The square is good for me. And I okay this. And I'm going to, uh, let's apply some material to it as well. So let's say uh, this is from copper and I'm going to save it as uh, output gear. And I repeat the process for the input gear. And this time everything's similar except I change the uh, number of teeth to 12. Okay, and um, here it's going to make it an inch in diameter because the diametral pitch is 12. Remember that the diametral pitch of the two gears have to be the same, otherwise they won't work. And diametral pitch is the uh, reciprocal of the gear modulus. As I said, it's equal to the number of teeth divided by diameter of the pitch circle. So uh, this could be as my smaller gear. I use the same pressure angle. Again, that has to be the same for both. The width does not necessarily have to be the same, but it's better to be. And I use the same shaft and the same keyway and everything. And 
and uh, this is good to go and I apply material to it and save it as the smaller gear so let's say this one is made of brass and uh, I go ahead and save it as the uh, input gear so the um, gearbox here is a reducer gearbox okay so this one is made and now I'm ready to go ahead and create the gearbox let's just apply the material to the bearing let's just do a uh, cast alloy steel and now I'm ready to create my assembly Okay, so I bring all of these parts in. Like that. Okay, and I make sure nothing is fixed right now. So all the parts are in. And, um... I need two bearings so I grab the bearing and make another one and before anything I go ahead and save it call it the reducer gearbox so now first thing first I need to assemble the gears in place so for that I go and put both of their back plates uh, coincident with the front plane of the assembly so I keep them in place I do the same thing for the other one there we go seems like there is some constraints already created here there we go so let me get rid of that <clears throat> so the gears are now on the same plane that's good now we have to make sure that they only spin in place for that, I go on the front plane and I create some reference sketch. So I go ahead and draw a circle here and then another circle aligned horizontally with it. And the diameter of them are not important, but here just make them uh, the same size as the uh, shaft holes. So I make them equal. and make sure these two are horizontally aligned the distance between the two centers should be radius of one gear plus radius of the other gear now if you remember when we created the gears the diameter of this one was an inch pitch diameter and this one was two inches so the radius of this one is half that one is one so the center to center distance should be one and a half inches okay so here we go so now these are in good conditions and now we can use them for proper um, placement of the gears so let's go ahead and uh, do that so here I make this circle and this one concentric and then similarly this one and this one so now the gear should only spin in place. Of course, independent from each other right now, but they are doing what they should be doing. And I can hide this sketch as I don't need it anymore. So now I need to apply the gear constraint between them so they do their motion properly. First, I make sure the gears do not have any overlap or interference like that. Okay, and you can always check it by going to evaluate and checking the interference, making sure there is no interference. Then you go to your mechanical mates and use the gear. And then here you can say between uh, like this one and this one, although you have to be careful here, it takes the ratio from the diameter of these two circles which is not right. The diameter, uh, we need to use our diameter of the pit circles, not diameter of the holes, which are the same. 
So the ratio should not really be point half to point half. It should be point half to one. Okay, so be careful about that. Or go back to the gears, make the pit circles visible, and then choose the pit circles instead. That way you make sure that the speed ratio is correct. So here, if we choose that, now spin it, make sure that the small one spins faster. And you see it does. So now it is working fine. The gears are in place and good. We save it and then we go for the shafts and the bearings and the housing. So we need the shaft. The shafts we make in place. We make it in the assembly. So I go here and say create a new part. And I call it first float it. Rename it. And uh, call it shaft. Then I go ahead and create the shaft here. So I go to this front plane. And draw a circle. Make sure that circle is the same as this circle. The location of that right now doesn't matter. Then I need to make the uh, keyway. So I go ahead and use a center rectangle right above center. And I draw something like this. Go to the trim tool and get rid of the parts that I do not need, which are these ones. So now the shape is there. I just need to put dimensions there. So I choose this one, and then I choose this one, and I force them to be equal. And then I choose this one and this one, and I force them to be equal as well. And of course, these two have to be equal again. So uh, here, it's symmetric, it's good. I get out, and I'm going to extrude it. Maybe six inches, that is too much, maybe four inches. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, let's make it shorter. Two inches is good. So that's the shaft, two inches, and let's apply aluminum here. Or maybe steel. So let's go with uh, steel. Okay, and get out and save. And I make sure I save it externally. So the shafts are the same. So all I need is to make another one of that. So just hold down control, drag and release, and I get one more shaft. So let's go ahead and assemble the shafts first. So go here. And uh, here we're gonna make sure that uh, this one and this one are concentric. Then um, we can rotate this it up there we go and now we make this surface and this one parallel then uh, we need to make these two coincidence like this okay so that one is in place we go for the second one and repeat the same step as you can see the shaft is properly moving with the gear so again these two parallel and these two coincident okay so here the shafts and the key the shafts and the gears are in good position and now we just need to make the keys and we repeat the process we go and say new part again make it float rename it as key come back and create the key I draw a rectangle and I apply the dimension so this one and this one should be equal and since it's a square one so these two are also equal really so it's gonna be like that again here I'm not doing tolerances 
Okay, if you want to do tolerances, that is going to be more serious. So we skip that. It's just modeling here, basic modeling. And this thickness should be 0.4, the thickness of the gears. And uh, we also apply some material here, like that. Get out, save, and again, save externally. And make one more of the key and then go ahead and assemble them. So that should not be very hard. All we need a few coincidences. So this is one. This is two. And this is three. There we go. That key is in. Now, it seems like there is a little bit gap here. Okay, so it's not perfectly square, really. And uh, I can go ahead and fix that. So here I want to measure this. So it's 0.07 inches, okay? Right, and that's what we need to have for the other one. 0.07 inches, so I can go back to the key and modify it. So that height, I don't want it to be equal to this. I actually wanted it to be 0.14 inches. There we go, get out. So now it should be in good shape, hopefully. Seems like it's a little bit longer than what it should be. Okay, but uh, Okay, let me use my evaluate tool and measure distance from here to here. Might be more appropriate. It says 0.14. The thing is, it only shows two decimals, so it is not really showing enough of accuracy. You see, the number is 0.1359, right? So uh, that's the number that we need. Okay, so that one is good. Let's do the other one and done. Okay, so now the keys are also in. And they should all work as expected. Perfect. Okay. Okay, I changed the color of the uh, shafts too, to make it more colorful, really. I painted them black. Now we have to have the bearings and the uh, casing. One other thing is, if you notice here, my shafts, the keyway is gone all the way to the back. And we just need it for the width of the gear, not all the way to the back. So let me fix that right now. See here, I'm going to one of the shafts, go here, and uh, just an extrusion, or you can go back and fix the original one. There are so many ways you can do it. So, uh, it is going to go 1.6 inches and in this direction. Okay, there we go. So now the shafts only have the keyways inside the gear and not outside of it. Okay, this is more appropriate. And now we need to make the casing and the bearings, put the bearings in. So Let's go ahead and uh, create the uh, mate for the bearings. So we put this on here. And then I give a distance between this face and this one. Let's say an inch. Back like that. OK. 
Okay, and repeat the same process for the other one. Okay, so the bearings are in place now. And we need to make the housing. So what I'll do is I'll create another part and call it the housing. And I'm going to make this housing. So I'm going to make a rectangle and I'm going to go like that give it some dimensions so this one may be uh, three inches and this one may be four inches and uh, what I need is to create the holes in the back of it so what I'll do right now is I uh, get out of here and I extrude this as a shell. And remember the total length we need should be more than two inches. So I go for, but to these guys, it's just like 1.4. So we really need 1.4 if you want to go to the bearings and the bearings have some thickness too okay so um let's go 1.4 right now and go for a thin feature point one of an inch is good and it's external it's good so this is that casing and now I need to go and create what? Create the front and the back. So before that, I can go back and uh, put this proper assembly. And um, let me change this to because I need a little bit gap in the front. So maybe I go 1.6 inches. So I go ahead and make a distance between this face and this face of 0.2. Put it in proper distance from the front. Okay, you see now if you look in this direction, the back of this and the front of the bearing are flush. And <laughs> I need to position this properly too. So I can go back with my sketch that I did. And I can provide some offsets here to place these exactly in the middle. So for example, I can go and choose this and this one. And let's see if I can provide some offset here. So it's 1.6 inches. The whole thing is four. This offset is one and a half. Okay. So if I just make this one and a half, you see that gives me some good offset here. And then I can do these two as well. That is should be 1.5. There we go. So let's say we place them like there. Okay, it doesn't need to be perfectly in the middle, although we can do that using the width constraint. But let's say this is good right now. And I can hide the sketch. So now I go back to the housing and I try to complete that part. So I go back to the housing. And here I go on this plane and start my sketch and it should be the same rectangle or I can use convert entity 
and uh, I should have holes for the size of these bearings. So I go to the center of the bearing and make it as big as the bearing like that and then one here like this okay and then go to extrusion and extrude this for 0.1 of an inch or a little bit more actually because the bearings are thicker okay so I can have them sit inside those like this maybe 0.2 right here like this and now for the front of this housing I'm not gonna make it uh, some material like for example let's say this housing is made of some metal let's say aluminum okay so i'm not going to make the front of the housing also aluminum i want to add glass to the front so i can see inside of it so what i'll do here is i make a multi-material and for that i'll go here to this front plane and i choose this sketch like that convert entity and then I extrude it for 0.1 of an inch backwards in and I don't merge the results so I can have multi-body so I do that and now if you go under solid body there are two solid bodies I can click on the second one and edit the material for that Make it out of glass, let's see. There we go. Okay, so now you can see that the gearbox and everything is made. And here, just for the sake of cosmetics, I made this uh, box blue. And the other thing you need to do is to make sure this housing is fixed, right? Now, if I go ahead and move these shafts, right? If I try to rotate them, look, they are working as planned. There we go. Right? Or you can grab the other one, right? The input shaft, and you should be able to rotate that one. There we go. Right? So here you have your gearbox and the gearbox has the bearings implanted in it now in reality what you need to do is to make sure uh, these fittings are uh, basically press fitting or you need to put some extra layers here in front of this housing so these bearings cannot get off from this front side and they can only be assembled from the back so uh, you can go for example inside this housing right and uh, you can add something to the housing you can go on this back plane here and um, let me see if i can hide this um, surface there so you can go there and maybe add some extra cover uh, here to um, avoid the bearings movement forward so you can go there and on that plane you can create a sketch and you can use this sketch here basically right this is sketch that we originally had this one and or this guy actually the second one this one you need this so you just need those circles right so if i go with control 8 here what you need is from this you need these circles but smaller than them so you go and like choose this one and then make it a little bit smaller go with some offset maybe like this you just need to reverse it bring it in and a similar thing for this one 
right and you also need this one here and now that you have that sketch with this new sketch that you made you can give it a little bit of thickness inside something like that okay so now with this extra wall that I made the bearings are only accessible from the back not from the front so if I go back and exit here and I hide these gears so we can see them so like this input gear if I just hide it so you see now you cannot access the bearing you can only see a little bit of that but clearly you cannot access it but if you go to the back of the box you see you can access the whole bearing so this is uh, to make it more safe basically okay so hopefully it is uh, a useful video to you and you learn how to make a gearbox with the components from the toolbox by adding some extra component yourself like the shaft and the keys and the uh, housing and hopefully this video was useful to you thank you so much and i'll see you in the next lecture